Welcome, I'm Hugh Brumall, the Deputy Superintendent for the Red Clay Consolidated School District. This video is to highlight the next phase of the district's strategic plan. In the spring of 2016, the district started with a series of community meetings. Those meetings continued through the fall and winter. The draft of the strategic plan is reflective of those conversations with our community and focused to enhance our students' strengths and address our challenges. Next, you'll hear from our goal and focus leaders an overview of the district's plan. My name is Amy Grundy and I serve as the Director of Elementary School Operations here in the Red Clay School District. In collaboration with many other people, I will be charged with facilitating the implementation of the activities in Goal 1, Academic Excellence. And this goal, goal is truly focused on building a strong foundation for our youngest learners, uh, students in grade, grades pre-K through 5. And to do this, we're really going to be focused on strengthening our implementation of our Tier 1 core instruction, particularly in reading and math. And also strengthening our capacity to intervene on behalf of our struggling learners through our response to intervention processes and procedures. We'll be focused on increasing the capacity of our administrators to identify and support high quality instruction and working with our teachers to increase their capacity to implement high quality instruction. And to do this, we will implement systematic district-wide learning walks, use an observation and feedback protocol where we use feedback as a tool for professional growth and provide meaningful professional development to the professionals in our organization. In addition, in our goal one academic excellence, we plan to expand the implementation of our one-to-one -one initiative and truly ensure that we're using technology to positively impact teaching and learning. We're also, we are also going to shift our grading practices in our elementary schools to a more standards-based approach where we're really focused on learning. So the way that we uh, report progress to our families in our district will shift to a standards-based approach. We're going to increase language opportunities that we provide for our young learners by implementing language immersion programs in many of our elementary schools. We're also going to really look at the decisions that we make around staffing and scheduling to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our most of, of learners actually across the learning spectrum, from pre-K to our students with special needs to our talented and gifted students. So making these decisions to really build our schedules and place our staff in the right positions to impact teaching and learning for our young learners. We're confident that when we implement the activities in this goal, that we will truly have a positive impact and help our students to meet or exceed national performance standards. Hi, I'm Sam Golder. I'm the Director of Secondary Schools in the Red Clay School District, and I'm here today to talk about Goal 2 of the Strategic Plan. You know, Goal 2 of the Strategic Plan is a compilation of work with administrators, teachers, parents, and students, and it sort of builds on our former Strategic Plan. Some of the successes in the past Strategic Plan that we will use in this new Strategic Plan include trying to give our students access to high rigor coursework. Of course, if you give students access to high rigor coursework, we have to support the work they're doing. So we are going to, once again, contract with the AVID program and also push the AP Boot Camp concept. AP Boot Camp is an opportunity for students to come together over the summer and work on enhancing their AP skills long before the school year actually starts. So that builds on the old strategic plan, but what about some of the new initiatives that we're looking at here in the next five years? Well, we're going to start off by putting a real emphasis on our career and technical education programming. In Red Clay, we want to do a better job in a few areas. Work-study partnerships, in other words, students go ahead, they get jobs on the workforce and partner with the educational institution, Red Clay, to earn credit and money at the same time. We want to build partnerships so students can get certification affiliations with outside agencies, OSHA certificates, ServeSave certificates in the culinary area, etc. We feel that students are better equipped to enter the workforce if they have some tangible documentation in hand as they move to apply for jobs. Lastly, we're going to take a look here in the new strategic plan on enhancing our transition services with the Special Services Department. You know, in every student's IEP that's a special education student, there's a goal for transition out of high school. We feel in Red Clay we can do a much better job in enhancing the transition programs and making kids understand that the skill sets you learn in high school really do align to what you can do at the next level. 
Couple all of that with a profile of the red clay graduate that we're going to put together here in the next two to three years and the continuity of our red clay college fair that has been so popular here over the last four to five years. So we're excited about goal two of the red clay strategic plan. So much work to do, so much great work in the past, but boy, uh, it's going to be great as we work on enhancing what we've done already. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Selliston. I'm the Director of Special Services uh, here with Red Clay, and I am the goal leader for Goal 3, which is um, supporting success of all of our, our students. Um, goal 3 has um, five key areas um, that we're going to talk about today, and each of these five areas um, really uh, is, a, is a result of input from our internal and external stakeholder groups. So um, as we go through the five areas, you'll see that it's um, about supporting students' academic and social-emotional success and really supporting the whole child um, and, uh, um, as our students develop. So our first area is inclusive school culture. This is about supporting all of our students to feel welcome and safe uh, and accepted in our schools. Under inclusive school culture, <clears throat> there's three key initiative areas that I, I want to make sure that you know about. The first is culturally responsive practices that help um, our staff to have the tools that they need um, to make sure that all students, whether they're English learners, um, students who are um, from different cultural, uh, cultural backgrounds or minority groups, um, or maybe from different um, socioeconomic status, that those students feel welcome and accepted at our school, and the teachers have the tools to um, really incorporate students' skills and interests and background knowledge into their lessons and curricular materials. The second area um, under inclusive school culture is trauma-informed systems. We have a lot of students today that experience trauma in their communities, experience trauma in their homes, and uh, by focusing on trauma-informed systems, we will be able to intervene early for students, we'll be able to screen and understand when students are experiencing different areas of trauma and be able to support them through different types of interventions. We'll also be able to monitor those students to make sure um, that, that they are supported uh, emotionally and that we'll be able to connect them with different types of services they may need. Uh, the third area under inclusive school culture is really uh, continuing our work on inclusion in our district by making sure that teachers have the strategies to support students with various disabilities and also students with uh, who are English learners who are at various uh, stages of learning English. And so this is really giving teachers um, tools for their toolbox on how do we support our students with disabilities and English learners. By doing these three areas, culturally responsive practices, trauma-informed systems, and support for students with disabilities and English learners, this will help us overall uh, to build an inclusive district-wide culture. Our second area under goal three is academic supports. And obviously this is a key area because we want all of our students to be successful and achieve their academic growth goals. Um, in order to achieve this, we want to make sure that we're building out our response to intervention systems at each of our schools, that elementary and secondary have both uh, reading and math interventions in order to be able to support kids if they're struggling uh, with reading, struggling with comprehension, struggling with math uh, proficiency. So um, that would be the area of response to intervention. In addition for academic support, uh, related to our English learners, we want to make sure that those uh, students are getting the uh, English language development instruction that's needed in order to bring their English proficiency uh, to a level where they can succeed academically. And so um, the Office of uh, English Learners is going to be focused on supporting staff to uh, build out really strong English language development instruction um, so that students can really work on targeted uh, language development and skills. Our third area under academic support <clears throat> is specially designed instruction, which is really related to students with disabilities. Uh, we can do many accommodations and things to support our students, but specially designed instruction is critical to make sure that they're gaining the skills they need to be successful. And so under academic support, we feel uh, that response to intervention, English language development instruction, and specially designed instruction for students with disabilities is really critical to making sure that all students can achieve academically. Our third big area of goal three is social emotional supports. This is a critical area for us um, because you know we tend to focus on academic supports which is very important but 
we also have students with a lot of social emotional needs and sometimes behavioral needs. So this area of goal three really looks at targeting, building out tiered behavioral support systems at all of our schools to make sure that students that are having social, uh, social needs or behavioral challenges can receive the interventions early and before it escalates to uh, a more difficult situation for the student and their family. So this area will focus on helping all of our schools, providing support for them to be able to build out the interventions necessary to, re to really support our kids. The other thing under social emotional support that I want to talk about is mental health. You know, across the nation, we're seeing a huge increase in students with, with mental health needs. And sometimes as a school system, that's very hard for us to, to figure out how to support those needs. And so this social emotional support area will be a time for us to focus on building out services to help our kids that have identified mental health challenges. This will, this can include building out social emotional support classrooms with a therapeutic element to provide the support necessary for those students to stay in school, to be included with all of their peers, and to be successful. Um, the fourth area under supporting success is really expanding our services for students with autism and social communication needs. This is an expanding population in our district, and we are receiving more students really every week uh, with autism and social communication needs. And so we're looking at um, having specialists within the district that can support these students um, from the standpoint of speech language services, um, psychological services, counseling services, as well as specialists uh, in the area of autism uh, teaching and instruction that can provide strong uh, instruction for the students. In addition, we'll be looking at expanding our autism support classrooms um, across all grades. The fifth area of supporting success is really working with the community and families uh, in collaboration. And um, this is a critical area not only for our English learners, but our students with disabilities to make sure that um, the, the school and the family are working together, that, that there is um, kind of seamless supports between home and school, and that when families are engaged in meetings at school, they, they feel empowered to be an equal participant in those meetings. And um, so the fifth area, family collaboration, really is a support to make this entire goal a success. So just to recap, the five big, big ideas under goal three are inclusive culture, increasing academic supports, uh, enhancing and building out social emotional supports, expanding autism uh, services for students with autism and social communication needs, and then also working uh, directly with our families uh, as part as equal partners um, in this process. So those are the five big areas, um, and uh, we look forward to providing all these supports so that all of our students um, can can achieve and be successful both academically and social emotionally. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Chad Carmack and I'm with the HR department in the Red Clay Consolidated School District. Um, today it's my pleasure to provide you with some information in reference to focus area number one, which is high quality educators. And I guess to start off, really want to define what does it mean by high quality educator. High quality educator is not just a classroom teacher, which is critical in Red Clay, but we're also in our plan looking at paraprofessionals, for example, we're looking at specialists. A specialist might be a psycho school psychologist, an educational diagnostician, school nurse, and we've also brought into the plan uh, the school level, school level leaders like assistant principals, the principal, and district level leaders. So all of those folks are grouped into this plan and our strategic planning process was, uh, was critical in understanding those folks that were involved understanding how important it is, not just the classroom teacher, but everybody that's affecting student achievement and the results that we're getting with our, our kids. So um, when we think of um, this planning process, we were able to identify a, a specific challenge right from the start. Uh, at the beginning of, uh, or at the end of last year, this last school year, our strategic planning group came in and we said, uh, the measure is a real challenge when you're looking at highly effective people in our buildings. Uh, with that information, we were able to come out to the communities, come out to uh, our principals and teachers, and we created our own measure. Uh, the red clay performance level measures were uh, put into place and implemented this year as a part of 
a, a way to help in our strategic planning and to really identify uh, who is highly effective in our buildings. Uh, from that, there's a lot of excitement. Teachers are extremely excited and uh, folks are wondering, how do you become highly effective? Well, part of that process is through professional development. Uh, we know in this planning process that professional development is not a one-shot deal, that we need ongoing professional development, and we need very specific professional development. When our teachers are involved in professional development, they basically are able to, at the end of that, provide us with survey information about what they need next. And we're able to, we're uh, in our strategic planning process, able to broaden uh, those opportunities that are out there for our staff and uh, we really think that our, our uh, successes are going to be uh, improved in our professional development area through that. Uh, to give you some examples, uh, also we, we don't believe in one-shot professional development. Uh, examples are aspiring assistant principals and aspiring principals. Uh, those programs are two-year programs uh, we know that if, if uh, someone wants to be an assistant principal in our buildings, that they need more than just a one professional development, and then uh, that gives them an opportunity. It just doesn't work that way. So we want all of our professional development to be important and ongoing. Um, those are just some of the highlights in uh, focus area number one, highly effective, highly qualified, uh, educators and I just want to thank all the folks that were involved in the process of making that area, that focus area, critical to our strategic plan. So thank you. Good morning. My name is Michael Simmons and I'm the manager of federal programs for the Red Clay Consolidated School District. Focus three is community engagement. Under community engagement, we have three topics student and parents, employee, and community partners. Under student and parent, we are trying our best to establish a student advisory council. Hopefully this will be led by Dr. Doherty or Dr. Brumall, and we will try our best to involve students in all decisions that are made for the Red Clay Consolidated School District. We really feel to be a good brand, we need our students to buy in to what's going on. We also have established the RC PAC, which is the Red Clay Parent Advisory Council. This council meets once a month to discuss a number of topics that are really prevalent to what's going on in our district. Under employees, we have some great employees here at Red Clay, I will say. Um, one thing that we really would like to do is to brand ourselves as not just the best, but the number one place for teachers to apply to work at. Why? Because we have the best students, we have the best district office staff members, and we have the best support of parents that one can ask for. We want to make sure that teachers feel appreciated. So our goal this year is to try our best to reach out to each school to find out what's going on and to highlight the teachers that are doing some remarkable things. With that in mind, teachers will feel empowered, they will feel like we appreciate them, and they will know working for Red Clay is a great thing. Employee recognition. District office right now, we're doing a great job with that. And we will try our best to continue on promoting it. Last but not least, community partners. We would like to develop some internships. Hopefully with these internships, students will be able to leave and graduate, and if they decide not to go to college, they will be able to go straight into the workforce by working for an employer within the Red Clay community. What speaks more about your community but hiring students that actually went to school here and can really brand that company? So in closing, community engagement is our focus for Goal 3. Thank you. This plan is also supported by our District Operations Department. Transportation, nutrition, facilities, and safety and security are all integral in the support of our plan and the success of our students and educators. Another phase that is vitally important to the district is financial resources. In February of 2015, our community supported the Red Clay Consolidated School District with a successful referendum. Those monies and all the financial resources available to the district are utilized to support the goals and focus areas of the district's strategic plan. We thank you for watching this video. We thank our board for their support in defining a vision to lead our path and journey for the next five years. If you have questions on the district strategic plan, please contact me, Hugh Brumall, at the district office. Thank you.